Governor Gretchen Whitmire of Michigan, who herself is simply a bundle of joy and terror and all at the same damn time, <laughs> has decided that a few days ago she was going to declare racism a public health crisis. Oh, yes. In the middle of a pandemic, which has claimed countless number of diabetics, old folks, and other people with pre-existing med- medical conditions, she has decided that this amorphous, phantom problem of racism is a public health issue. Now, is this to say that racism does not exist? Of course not. Of course it exists. But a public health issue? Standards, definitions, and all everything else that is needed to make an argument is sorely needed here. But first, let us see Governor Whitmer actually explain herself. Today, I also signed an executive directive declaring racism as a public health crisis in Michigan. I want to thank the Michigan Legislative Black Council for their leadership. This pandemic has confirmed and highlighted the deadly nature of these pre-existing inequities caused by systemic racism. We have a lot of work to do to eradicate the systemic racism that black Americans have faced for generations. And it's going to take time. But the most important thing we can do during this time is work closely with leaders across the state in every community to find the root cause of problems and work to eradicate them. Little speech there. I'll, I'll digni- I will dignify it by saying it's a speech, but I think it's more of a platitude than anything else. And that, <laughs> and that little speech there, the little announcement, she insinuated that we have to work with particular black political organizations, which may or may not reflect the sentiments of all black people. They don't reflect my sentiments, certainly. To find the root cause of systemically racist issues that confront the black community. This is all fine and dandy if we can actually define a few things. A, what is systemic racism? B, how do we determine statistically the extent or the effect of systemic racism? And C, how are we sure that quote-unquote root causes over the years have not metamorphosized or de- or decreased and have been diluted by other things that may not be causing the issue? For example, let's say racism was the cause of someone not being able to go to the store, and that gave them immense anxiety over the years since they were excluded from their local community because racism or whatever, and they were attacked and insulted. Well... Let's say after 50 years, that person is still alive, they're in their elder age, and they still hold on to that, what happened, to that mindset, but the racism in that particular area is gone. Is racism still the root cause being to affect? Because if it is, I'm not entirely sure you would get anywhere, because the racism is, like, it's, it's no longer an active role, it's no longer the foundation, or if it is a foundation, it's a very dormant foundation, it's like a dilapidated house. You can't really live in it, there's no life in it, so why are you attacking it? Why don't you like? Why don't you attack what is actively causing that person's pain currently, which is their, their emotions? So, in a similar analogy, Governor Whitmer seems to be suggesting that indeed disparities. Oh yes, disparities, differences, which are integral, metaphysically and ontologically to the human being. Differences are what we need to be concerned as concerned of as Mr. Ganders and Americans. Differences, or also known statistically by sociologists as disparities. That word, that word should go away. The disparities are nothing more than the natural extension of life. Life is a disparity, okay? I don't look like Kobe Bryant did, the late Kobe Bryant. I don't look like him. I don't have his athletic prowess. I don't have his money. I sure as hell don't have his money. I don't, I don't have his connections. I'm not Kobe Bryant. There are a list of disparities just in that statement alone sociological, economic, on a socioeconomic level, Kobe Bryant is actually, he has disparities with the majority of Americans. A majority of Americans only make like about 50000 even a little bit lower than that, the median income. In, if you, on the lower end, it's worse. And on the upper end, it's, if you, if you make that stuff. So whenever you have, and this is a natural principle, Whenever you have the accumulation of resources, talent, and potential in one area, and it's as a machine, as a factory, turning into something great, you're going to have disparities. Or whenever you simply have a lot of something that other people do not have, you're going to have disparities. 
Now, the argument is that white folks have had more than black folks have had over the years, and this idea of generational wealth, since white folks were allowed to buy houses and buy property and divest their assets in different areas earlier than blacks were, whites are better off or whatever, which is just nonsense, because guess what? Wealth is not static. It is not a collective sum. There were plenty of black families, even amid the horror of Jim Crow, which it was truly a horror, truly a terrible plague on, on human consciousness, which completely and utterly destroyed our ability, or the ability of some people, to engage in basic human empathy. Even in the horror of Jim Crow, there were black individuals who were creating businesses and then coalescing their communities who were not allowed in the other businesses, and white businesses, to go to those businesses, and they were creating wealth for themselves. And there are, even, even right after slavery was abolished, even in the 1860s or after the 1860s, there were freedmen colonies like like Greenwood, Tulsa, Black Wall Street that created immense amounts of wealth despite palpable racially contrary situations, circumstances to that effect. So I don't want to hear this idea that wealth, that all blacks have a certain amount of static wealth that is put in a treasure chest and that is only accessible by certain people who have certain advantages. I don't want to hear that because that's nonsense. Wealth is a dynamic quantity that each and every person has in some way, shape, or form. These clothes that I have, even though they were bought on the clearance rack, they're still a form of wealth. Seriously. Not a lot of wealth, but there's still some wealth. All of us have wealth in our own different ways. It may have been true that it was a little bit harder under certain institutional barriers, or a lot harder, for African Americans to acquire general modes of wealth, like credit cards or other things that, that we use today to uh, ensure transactions are going to be fruitful for the future. But it is absolutely untrue that this is a palpable factor that is denying African Americans their ability to succeed in this world exponentially. It is not the factor or a palpable factor. It may have been a factor in the 60s or the 70s even or the 80s even, but after 50 to 60 years of constant social and institutional revolutionization of laws, of mindsets, of ideas, we we have moved to a point where African Americans, I can say this, African Americans are largely only held back by their own mind or by their own desires to where they want to go. They are either held back or progressed on the basis of those few things. I will not deny that there are lingering effects of institutional discrimination, which largely are mental effects, guys. It's largely mental. This idea of defeatism, of victimology, that is what the real effects, that's the real public health crisis, victimology. That is the true public health crisis of our era. So I don't buy to this idea that all African Americans are impeded by disparities. Disparities are what make us human. Dispar I'm happy there is a disparity between me and some of the greatest people. Because if there was not a disparity between me and the greatest, how would I ever know? Okay, watch this. How would I ever know who the greatest who the meanest, who the lowest, or who the highest were. How would I ever be able to, as an African-American guy, as the product of a single mother union, how would I be able to aspire something higher to myself if there wasn't a disparity between the low that I'm at and the high that person is at in the first place? Think about it. As always, guys, I love you. Please, stay pensive.